It's day six of our workout to heal burnout challenge. Hey friends, it's Kate here. Thanks so much for joining me today. Now it is day six of our little seven day challenge. If you wanna go back to the beginning, I'll put a link up there. Know that each class is standalone so you can just join in whenever you like. This challenge is really meant to help those of us that are maybe healing from burnout. I left a job earlier this year that left me feeling incredibly drained, just very overwhelmed, and I thought I would share some of the tips that have been helping me recover from that. Now, obviously, exercise is a big point of that, which is why we do that on every single class, um, also because that's what my you know, channels all about the Pilates and the yoga. But each day of the challenge, I'll give you a little tip or trick or something that's been helping me recover, followed by just a 10 minute class. And those classes are short on purpose. I know when we're feeling burnt out, when we're feeling overwhelmed, the idea of committing to an hour long video just might be too much and that's absolutely fine. Instead, maybe committing to just a little bit of movement, five minutes, 10 minutes each, day can make a big difference and it doesn't feel like it's quite the you know marathon of classes at the end of every single video if you want something a little bit longer I will link to a longer class that will go very well with the one you just did today's tip might be one of the most obvious but also one of the most challenging as far as actionable tips go and that's make a change if you are in a situation where you're feeling burnt out, overwhelmed, overworked, like you're not getting the support and care you need for yourself, you do have to make a change. You do have to take action and advocate for yourself. That can be very, very hard. It's something that it's really challenging for me to admit when I need help or when I need to make a change. I think that it's just, you know, in my nature to think I can power through and I can do everything. So this one was really hard for me to admit, but it's ultimately what led me to leaving the job that left me feeling very burnt out. I took a lot of time trying to, you know, either speak with HR or speak with other supervisors about what we could do to give me a better work-life balance, and yet it just it just was not manageable there, and leaving the job was the best decision I've made my, for myself in a really long time. It did take a lot of courage to leave the job, if I'm going to be honest, but one that I'm ultimately really happy about. And so making a change, you doesn't have to, I'm not advocating for you to, you know, just quit your job if the, you're feeling burnt out from your job and you don't want to. Instead, I'm just saying that if we know we're in a space where we're feeling overwhelmed, you need to look at what actionable items you can do, what things that you can change in your surroundings to make it a little bit better. Maybe that means talking to your partner, your friends, your family about the situation. Maybe it means taking some of the tips we've talked about earlier in the week and really trying to implement them into your life. Like maybe working out every day has made a big difference. Maybe walking outside or, or finding a new mindful activity. But making some small changes can make a big difference in how we feel. So again, it's kind of one of those where it feels a little obvious. Maybe you just need someone to say it but noticing where we can change and what we can control can make a big difference. And ultimately, sometimes we just have to realize, I need a change, I need something different, I know this is gonna make me feel better. And yeah, and it definitely can. So today's class is actually a yoga class. We are going to do some lovely ooey gooey stretching, just kind of get into our chest a little bit, get into our hips. We've been working hard all week with some nice full body classes, and so I thought this would be a good one for our day six. No props are needed. If you have yoga blocks or a yoga strap and you know you have limited mobility, that's always an option, but hopefully everything is accessible to everyone. Just roll out your mat, let's get started. We'll start in a seated position, whatever feels good for you. Take a moment to roll the shoulders back, to lift out of the waist, to close your eyes if you feel comfortable with that. Take an easy sip of breath in, big sigh out. Again, big inhale, big breath out. One more breath, let it go. Seal your lips together, breathe through the nose. Slide your ears up just a little bit higher. Flutter the eyes open, take both hands high over hat. Exhale, flip the palms, push them down. 
inhale actively reach your fingertips up like you're trying to lift off of the mat exhale push the hands down one more time both hands lift high we'll twist to our right take your left hand to your right thigh your right hand behind you and take your twist as deep or shallow as you want you can really use your arms to deepen the twist or it can be a little more chill when you're ready unravel both hands lift high Twist in the opposite direction, right hand to left thigh, maybe looking over the shoulder back behind you. Let that go, both hands lift up nice and high. This time take that same twist, both hands stay up, reach your fingertips away from one another, really point the nose back behind you. Unravel, take your twist in the opposite direction. Unravel. Flip the palms, press them down. Find a tabletop just for a moment. Take a moment here, low belly in, chest open. Extend your right foot behind you. Tuck the toes, push the heel back so we get that nice big stretch, the back of our calf. And then I want you to point your left toe away from your body. Reach your right hand high for a little side stretch. Hand can reach over our head. It could stay reaching up to the sky or even back behind you if we wanna open our chest a little more. And then slowly circle it all the way down to the mat. Extend your left foot behind you at first, pushing the heel back so we get that nice little stretch to the back of the calf. And I'll take my right toe, point it behind me, lift my left hand high for our gate pose, modified side plank sometimes stargazer, there are a million names for every single little pose we come to. You might take the hand in a new direction. You might follow a similar path that we did on the other side. Both hands come right back down. Knees can be together or apart, tip back to a child's pose. Head is heavy. Now I want you to crawl your fingertips towards one another, clasp the hands together, and bend your elbows, taking your fist to the back side of your neck. For me, I get a deeper stretch if I crawl my elbows a little further forward and then push my sternum closer to the mat. Big inhale. Big breath out. Another big inhale. Big breath out. Unravel. Come on all the way up and then lie on your tummy. Untuck the toes, really reach the feet as far away from you as you can and hug your elbows to your side. Before you go anywhere, make sure you're almost tucking your chin into your chest so we can lengthen through our cervical vertebra. Press your pubic bone into the floor, squeeze your thut, inhale, lift your chest. Now this is not about looking up. In fact, I want you to dip the chin a little bit more, really push the back of the head up to the sky. Take a big inhale, exhale, lower down. Inhale, roll the shoulders, lift the heart and chest up, hug the elbows towards one another. Look over your right shoulder. Look back to center. Look over your left shoulder. Look back to center, lower down. Tip yourself back to your child's pose once more. Send the hips nice and far away. And then tuck the toes, lift into a downward facing dog. If that's not in the cards for us, you could of course skip it. You could stay in your child's pose or you can meet us in a forward fold. Here in your downward dog, do bend your knees. Lift your sitting bones higher, hug your inner arms to your ears. Start to pedal through the feet a little. Look to the top of your mat. Walk your toes up to meet your hands. Find a simple forward fold, head is heavy. Grab your elbows, take a little rag doll side to side. Pause center, release your fingertips. Bend the knees deeper, roll all the way up to standing. Stand tall and straight, take both hands high, swim them up overhead, flip the palms, press them down, similar to we did the other day, sit back in a little chair pose. Navel up and in, chest open. Take your fingertips nice and far away like a great big T. Pick up your left heel, step your left foot behind us so we're back in our lunge. Hands can come to our hips, 
They could stay off in a T. You could reach them up overhead. Three times, straighten your front leg, bend your knee. That can be as deep of a bend or as shallow as you like. Straighten the leg, pause, squeeze the inner thighs together. Take your hands out to a T if they aren't already. Lift high onto your back toe and then sink the heel down. Lift high onto your back toe, sink the heel down. One more time, drop it down, pause. If this is not in the range of motion for us, it's okay. But if we can, we're gonna bend our knee and bring both hands down around our foot. And you might adjust the placement of one or both feet, but find your nice big lunge. For me, it feels really good to kind of rock my weight first forward and back, and then maybe even rock my weight a little side to side. Pausing right here, take a big inhale, big breath out. Bend your back knee, hop both feet together in a nice forward fold. Knees can be bent or straight. Nod the head yes, shake it no. And roll yourself all the way up to standing. Sit deeply into your chair pose once more. Take your hands out to a T. Pick up your right heel. Take the leg behind you just like we did on the other side. What do you want to do with your hands here? Something a little different? Maybe they just stay on our hip, focusing on keeping our abdominal muscles pulled in, but three times, straighten your front leg, bend the knee. Straighten your front leg, bend the knee. One more time, straighten, pause. Squeeze the inner thighs together. Lift high onto your back heel, sink it down. Lift high, sink it down. One more time, drop it down, pause, take a big breath. Bend your front knee, take your hands around your foot. Just find your lovely little low lunge. Do we need to adjust the placement of everything? Do you want to start to rock forward and back? Maybe a little side to side. And then at your own pace, take a big breath. Bend your back knee, hop both feet together. Nice, gentle forward fold. Bend both knees, roll yourself all the way up to standing. I'm gonna to turn to face you so you can see me a little bit better. You can face whatever direction you want. Turn all 10 toes away from one another. Put a little bend in your knees. Take both hands high. Full big inhale. Clasp the hands together. Bring them to your right thigh. Straighten your left leg. Now, for me, I find it feels good to lightly pitch forward, sending my sitting bone back, maybe getting into my left inner thigh a little bit. Bend both knees, stand tall now, straighten the legs, reach both hands high. And then bend both knees, pause. Clasp the hands together, bring them to your left thigh, lean over for that small side lunge. And again, I kind of pitch forward, I send my sitting bones back. Bend both knees, slide to the center, both hands lift high, point all 10 toes forward, and then flip the palms, chin to chest, Roll into a wide leg forward fold. Hands can stay right underneath your shoulders. You might walk them through your legs. You might nod the head yes and no. Does it feel good to push the hips side to side? Does it feel good to bend the knees deeply and push the hips side to side? Pause there for just a moment. Maybe if we're in the mood, you might clasp your hands together behind your back. That might be enough, you can stay there. You might try to straighten your arms away from your body. Let it go when you're ready. Bend both knees, heel toe the feet so they're back underneath your sitting bones. Slowly roll yourself all the way up to standing. Take a moment to notice how we feel since we began class. As always, friends, I invite you to pat yourself on the back, thank yourself for doing something so good and just for you. Remember, no matter how much or little of class you did today, be proud of yourself. You made it here, you're present, and know that I'm so proud of you as well. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow.